as for most British people, Dunkirk's a story that we grow up with. I can't even remember the first time I was told about the events at Dunkirk in 1940. And as a storyteller, you're always looking for gaps in the culture or cultural record and things that, stories that should have been made into modern films that haven't been. Uh, and Dunkirk is certainly one of those. I think it's one of the great stories of, of human history and it hasn't been addressed in modern films until now. The call went out. We have to go to Dunkirk. Ready on the stern line. What are you doing? You don't know where we're going. Into war, George. I'll be useful, sir. One of ours. I wanted to tell a story with an intense subjectivity. Uh, Dunkirk is a survival story. It's the story of 400,000 men trapped on a beach with the enemy closing in on all sides and a desperate race against time to get these guys back home. I wanted to put the audience on the beach with these guys. I wanted to put the audience in the cockpit of Spitfire uh, battling the enemy in the air. And I wanted to put them on the decks of a small boat with civilians coming over to try and, try and help these guys. Uh, and so to do that, decided to tell the story intensively, intensely subjectively, but from three different points of view, so that over the course of the film, as these stories sort of braid together, you get a more coherent picture of the larger events of, of Dunkirk. He's on me. I'm on him. try to do is do as much in camera as possible, do as much for real as we can. Uh, we want the film to feel tactile and physical and authentic. We want it to play in the present tense, you know, really, that the audience feels that they're there, uh, that there's no screen between you know, us and the events of, of 1940. Uh, and to do that, I feel very strongly that we shouldn't use too much visual effects, we shouldn't use too much in the way of computer generated imagery and so we really try to do as much in camera as possible by sourcing real planes from the era, real boats uh, and putting the actors into as close to the reality of the situation as we could safely do. They need to send more ships. Every hour the enemy pushes closer. They've activated the civilian boats. Civilians? We need to destroy it. Filming in the real location uh, seemed like the best way to get close to the truth of what the historical event was like. I mean, when you walk that beach, as we walked it a lot, uh, you feel the history there and you feel the pull of the place. Uh, we had to rebuild sections of the mole, which is this long breakwater structure that extends out to the sea uh, and that men were essentially trapped on, you know, waiting for boats to take them off. Um, and that recreation of history, uh, it poses a lot of logistical challenges, but ultimately to be able to restage these events with respect to historical accuracy uh, felt like an important part of uh, what we were trying to do and gave us a good basis for the making of the film. We shall fight on the beaches, we shall fight on the landing ground, we shall never surrender. People in Britain talk about the, the Dunkirk spirit, uh, and I think that the resonance of the story is different for different people, but at its heart, I think really, the story is one of communal heroism in the face of adversity. Uh, unusually for a story of conflict, a story of war, it's not so much a story about individual heroics as it is about uh, a communal effort and how as a society, as a group of people, we can achieve so much more than we can individually. We shall go on to the end. We shall never surrender.